Do you have a deep and abiding interest in classic games? Thapens are Dragon Series, The Seeker Saturn, are all of the above. THENGAME Developers Conference 2019 Organizers have good looks for you. Panzer Dragon Designer Yukio Futatsuki, an artist Kim Taro Yoshida, two Japanese game industry veterans who now work together at Grounding, will be at GDC in March to discuss designing and developing the Panzer Dragon series on Saturn. This is a very special classic game post-mortem, because you get two speakers and not one but three games discussed in depth. The original Panzer Dragoon, which was F-U-T-A-T-S-U-G I-B-S-D-E-B-U-T as a game designer, as well as its follow Panzer Dragoons 1 and the Rock Panzer Dragoon Saga, neither of which have ever been publicly deconstructed like this. It promises to be a fascinating hour long deep dive into the conception, development, and design of a seminal series, one that played a huge role in the life of the Saturn. Even if you are not interested in the history and the stories, Futatsuki and Yoshida believe that some of the lessons learned in struggling with the cutting edge hardware that were the Seeker Saturn can still be put to good use in the modern age of game development. For more information on this session and others, make sure to check out THGDC 2019 session scheduler. There you can begin to lay out your GD 2019, which takes place March 18th through the 10th at the newly renovated Moscone Center in San Francisco. For more details on GDC 2019, visit the show's official website, or subscribe to your regular updates via Facebook, Twitter, RSS, Goddard Sutra and DD are sibling organizations, under parent company Informa. The Goddard Sutra job board is the most diverse, active and established board of its kind for the video game industry. Here is just one of the many, many positions being advertised right now. Location, Troy, New York. About the role, we are looking for an experienced producer to support the production of a new title in development at Valen Studios. The producer will work closely with the project's key leaders and other production team members to successfully execute on a new, groundbreaking. Original Oop. The producer will help manage the project development from pre production through to product launch, working with key internal and external stakeholders to deliver on all critical milestones. If you are an experienced game producer, we want to hear from you. Responsibilities, requirements, qualifications, big places, interested, apply now. Whether you are just starting out, looking for something new, or just seeing what's out there, the Gunnar Sutra job board is the place where game developers move ahead in their careers. The more Sutra's job board is the most diverse, most active, and most established board of its kind in the video game industry, serving companies of all sizes, from indie to triple, looking for a new job. Get started here. Are you a recruiter looking for talent? Post the jobs here. Is the game that you're working on got that general body feeling? Are you waiting for that polish period? Towards the end of major milestone. How did it get like this? And what is the general standard of your product on a day-to-day -day basis? Here are five signs that you are suffering from general quality fatigue and some thoughts on remedies. Look around your team and ask yourself if there is anyone who embraces quality in the product's output beyond the minimal quality required for releasing. Individuals might take the quality of their own work seriously, but is there anyone looking at the big picture? This person may or may not be from the QA team, but a quality advocate will help with the prevention of issues and highlight risks a lot earlier in development. In the absence of such an individual, 
Cognitive is seen as faint or beaten in isolation. In advance of deadlines, and latent unknown issues can cripple a product before it gets out the door. So you have QA representation and a thinking job done on the cognitive front. What is your death QA ratio? There is not a correct answer for that as each product company is unique. I tend to say for one. But if your development throughput does not match the QA capacity to process, if you are comprising your product quality and starting to acquire QA debt, this is not about moving jobs across a scrum board and completing sprints. This is about the time and attention that both developers and QA can invest in the testing process. Have a think about that kind of issues you are looking to unearth and prevent. If you expect the product to stand up to some serious destructive testing, then make sure the QA team has the capacity to perform these tasks. You have got a QA team with a decent death QA ratio, but how do your sprints typically end? Are you always reaching the ending across the board or do you have a culture of assuming things are complete when work is actually marked as in test. Presuming quality is a flawed approach and is a little exposed when stakeholders attempt to interact with a complete task, find a problem and raise it. It's not worth rolling the dice but equally. This approach also puts your QA team on the back foot as there is inherent pressure to sign off and there is greater resistance to fix any of those non-functionality issues. This normally results in testing being downgraded to tracking and in the long term this contributes to a non-polished and awkward user experience of the product. Your team has the time it needs to test, but how does your quality advocates keep up with the ever-changing landscape of game development? Investing in tooling is a huge factor in the smooth delivery of a product and is often a multidisciplined approach. When it comes to QA specific development tasks, do you find yourself asking the QA team to make its own tools? Small requests, like requesting debug cheat commands, can unlock a lot of QA time to focus on other tasks, but it's often seen as something. The QA team should let themselves by learning other skills. The successful product will put these tasks into the backlog and assign them to the best person qualified to complete it and not treat them as a side. Nice to have. Project. And finally, where exactly does QA lie in your corporate hierarchy? Are you positioning the quality advocates as an independent discipline? Are the subset of a subset within the company? Real and lasting quality can be derived in how the company treats, views and trusts their quality advocates, and is only as effective as the level they are allowed to operate within the business. Do not compromise your QA team's remit by putting them in a corporate corner. A good role of them is being able to see if the leadership structure of your art design programming teams near or with course, news brief, Canadian developer hot head games, has opened up a new division to focus on using its analytical, marketing, and development resources to publish mobile games from other developers. The company is banking on its own experience with self-publishing mobile games like Hero Hunters and Big Wings Parts to help it support games from indie and small developers that sign on with this new branch. Because Hothead has built our own publishing infrastructure to support our internally developed games, we know firsthand how complex it is to develop, publish and support a living arts mobile game, said Hothead Games, director of publishing Greg Hendon, in a press release. We have every skill set required to make a game a success based on our experience with our own games. More information on what the new publishing arm is offering, as well as contact info for those noble devs seeking a publisher.
can be found on the Hot Head Games website. Spatalos developer Improbable has published a final statement on Spatalos and Unity, with the goal of summarizing the last day's worth of public back and forth between it and Unity. In the post, the captain calls for Unity to clarify recent changes to its terms of service that have seemingly put Unity-based games that utilize Spatalos at risk. The post which can be read in its entirety on Improbable's website, reiterates its original argument that changes to Unity's terms of service make it so that any owner or user of a managed service, like Spatlos in this case, can be potentially found in breach of Unity's terms, despite Unity's informal assurances that this is not the case. Improbable has already been found in violation of Unity's terms, a violation the company refutes in this latest post, and had its Unity licenses revoked as a result. So while Unity says that the toast changes do not affect individual game developers with live or in production spatlos games, Improbable says that, with its Unity access kicked off, it is no longer able to legally support those projects, fix Unity-centric bugs, or improve the service for those drags. Unity's post from yesterday, published in response to Improbable's original notice, outlines why the company says Spatalos deaths do not need to be concerned with the falling out between the two companies.